Hello everybody and welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on function machines and I hope you enjoyed the rather graphic cover image for today's lesson. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to tell your friends about this channel and invite them along and let's get started. So this is an absolutely classic function machine question. Part A, what is the output from machine A if the input is 2? So we try an input of 2, input 2, we times that by 3, which gives us 6. We add 5, which gives us 11. So the answer is 11. OK. What is the output, the output, the output from machine B if the input is 2? It's a bit like my cover image where parts of me go in and other parts of me come out. I suppose an output might be the only bit of me that's left. What is the output from, output from machine B if the input is 2? So we try that. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 is 13. So the answer is 13. So actually in your working, you don't need to be drawing any sort of fancy algebra or anything on the page. You can just work with the machines. The examiner will be able to see that your working out is up there. It's no problem at all. Which input would give an output of 23 from machine A? OK, so I'm going to change the colour of my pen just to make this easy. So we're going to have an output of 23. So if we undo the adding 5, we get back to 18. That's otherwise known as subtracting 5. And we undo the timesing by 3, so we need to divide that by 3. 18 divided by 3, of course, is 6. So that's our answer, 6. You can find other ways to replicate my working in different colours if you want. For example, you could uh, circle your numbers for the second solution to make them clearly different from the first set of working. Anything that makes it clear for you and for somebody else looking at your working, what's going on. Which input would give the same output from both machines? Now, there are ways of working this out, but let's just have a look at the problem. We've got times 3 plus 5 and we've got times 5 plus 3. What do you notice about these numbers? Well, probably fairly obvious, 3 plus 5 make 8 in both cases. So if we just add up these numbers, we get 8. So that's what we'd really like to do. But the trouble is we've got something times 3. We just want 3. How can we have something times 3 and still just have 3? We can do 1 times 3. Let's go for yet another colour just to be fancy. So 1 times 3. Hang on, that's like the red from before. Let's go for a totally different colour. Let's have green. Why not? 1 times 3 plus 5. That gives us 8. And if we have 1 times 5 plus 3, that also gives us 8. So going back to the question, which input would, the, would give the same output from both machines? It would be simply 1. And again, we can see that just by looking at 3 and 5 and 5 and 3, thinking these make the same things. So how can we mess with those numbers as little as possible? Timesing by 1 does that. Now, there is an algebraic way to do this, which is not too difficult. Um, but you do not have to do it. What I've just done is absolutely fine. You can do it like that. You can do it by trial and improvement. Algebra is entirely optional for this question. If we were to use algebra, um, then first of all, we need to think how we'd write each thing as an equation. Let's say that the number going in is x. OK, so we need the same number going in in each case is giving the same number coming out in each case. So we're going to have x times 3, which we'd write as 3x in algebraic notation, plus 5, is going to give the same result as, looking at machine b, 5x, that's x times 5, plus 3. So we've got 3x plus 5 equals 5x plus 3. Let's write it in our working out space. Notice how when I'm doing an algebraic x, I do it with curly curly, because that makes it look clearly different from this kind of x, which would be indistinguishable from a times or multiply sign. So 3x plus 5 equals 5x plus 3. And now you just solve the equation. I'm going to do this very quickly. This isn't an algebra lesson. Look at my other videos on algebra if you want me to explain why I'm doing the things that I'm doing here. So we want all the x's on one side, so we need to take away 3x from both sides. So we have 5 equals, oops, 2x plus 3. We want all the numbers on one side, so we take away 3 from both sides. 2 equals 2x, divide both sides by 2, 1 equals x, x equals 1. And we've got that answer already in the space here. Let's move on. 
Amy's number machine here is relatively simple. We subtract two and then we multiply by two. So I don't think we need to write out detailed working for every single stage. We need to complete the table first of all. Two gives an output of zero because two minus two is zero and zero times two is still zero, output of zero. Okay, input of five, five minus two is three, three times two is six, so you can put that in. Now we've got an output of minus two. Okay, let's use the machine to write this in, make this clear. So if it was times by two to give minus two, so we need to divide by two to reverse that, minus two divided by two equals minus one. Of course, so we're gonna have minus one. Okay, we minus two to get minus ones. How do we reverse, how do we reverse that? We need to add two, minus one. Add two is one. Always think of the number line. You've got a number line with a nice naught in the middle, a line going, line going across. You had uh, minus one over here. We need to add two. So we add one, it gets us to zero. Add another one, it gets us to one. So you can always have the number line in your head when you need to deal with a mixture of minus and positive numbers. So what are we doing here? We're ending up with one. Let's check that the other way just to be sure. One minus two is minus one times two is minus two. Yep, that works. Okay, input of minus two. Okay, so we have minus two minus two. So think of the number line again. We've gone to minus two and then we minus another two so that gets us to minus four. So you can think of a number line without drawing the complete number line. It's just a way of visualizing the problem in your mind. Okay, along with all the other rubbish in that space, if you are me. So what are we saying here? Minus two minus two is minus four times two. So times two makes the thing twice as much in whichever direction you're going. So here, we're already at minus four. We're going twice as far all the way over here. I better get rid of that because it's crossing out our answers. Takes us to minus eight. And there we are. Hannah has a different number machine, which has produced the following table of input and output numbers, okay? Uh, so we've got the table here, minus one gives minus two, naught gives one, one gives four, three gives 10, and so on. Unfortunately, the labels have fallen off. That is a little bit unfortunate. Write suitable labels on the diagram below. That would be this one. Okay, so basically we need to work out what the rules are that turn this, whoops, this input into this output. Um, and we can see that there are gonna be two rules because we've got two rules here. And that's it, let's do it. So there are lots of ways you could approach this and frankly, a lot of people are going to do this just by trying things out until they hit lucky. But we can be a little bit more intelligent about it because we are us. So let's have a look at this. First of all, we look at the input numbers and look what the gaps are. So we got minus one, naught, one. So we're just going up single steps and then we jump one to three. So be aware that the input column is not consistent. The output column goes up from minus one to two. So minus two, minus one, naught, one. Did I say minus one to two? From minus two to one. It goes up three places anyway. From one to four is also three. And then we've got four to 10, which is a jump of six, but we can see that there's something missing in the input there. So actually, if you did it in threes, so an input of two would give four, five, six, seven, and an input of three gives 10. So we're going up with gaps of three, 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 and then two threes there, because we've missed out a step. So if the interval is three each time on this side, and the interval is one each time on this side, except where it's two lots of one there, we can see that for each one the input goes up, the output goes up three times, okay? So we're jumping three numbers for every one number that we put in. In other words, something here is being multiplied by three. And that basic knowledge is going to fill in one of your boxes down here. So let's try that in the first box, okay? This is the kind of thing you'd always do with pencil, okay? So that you can get rid of it if it's incorrect. Never ever fill an answer space with pen unless you are absolutely certain that it's the final answer. So we're putting in our pencil here, or in my case, my magic electronic rubber ball electro pen. So times three. So we're playing around. We're seeing whether you can times three, then do something rather than the other way around times three, then do something. So this is simply a matter of playing around, okay? Let's pick something really simple, let's pick this one here. So if I times that by three, I'm going to get three 
but my output's four. Whoops, I keep dropping this. My output's four, so if I times three to get three, how do I get to four? I plus one, okay? Now let's try that on some others. So let's try down here. Three times three gives me nine. What do I need to do to get 10? I need to plus one. Aha, we may have a pattern here, okay? Let's try, let's leave the negative number to last because it's the trickiest to deal with. So zero times three gives us, hmm, zero. Three zeros are still zero. We add one and we get, lo and behold, one. So this is working for us. This is almost certainly correct. Let's check it with the negative number. So minus one times three. So three lots of minus ones. We've got minus one, minus one, minus one, minus three, okay? So times that by three, we get minus three plus one. Think of our number line, okay? Crucial to think of number line. So here's zero on the number line. We are at minus three. That looks like a third. No, no, no. What? It is a minus, th what am I doing? Okay, minus three. And now we're going to add one. So adding one always means moving to the right on our number line. So we're going to move that way by one step. That's going to take us to minus two. And that is indeed what we get here. So this works. So times three, then plus one gives us our output. And that is Hanna's rule. As for why plus one then times three doesn't work, I'll leave that for you to play with as a little bit of a challenge. I hope that was useful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then why not? There is no downside. Please tell all your friends about Easy 11 Plus and invite, in, and invite, invite, I can't talk today, them along next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. In the meantime, why not watch this video, which is going to, I can't talk, this video, which is going to be ideal for your continued 11 Plus preparation um, and please do take a moment to write something in the comments underneath. Tell me how you found this video, give me your answers, any suggestions for future sessions. It'll be wonderful to read it and to reply. Bye-bye.